Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back. This is going to be a follow-up to the previous video where we talked about hoisting at the conceptual level. Now we're going to go through some code samples to illustrate these concepts. Now, before we get started, I'd encourage you to check out our sponsor. Are you looking for a JavaScript web development bootcamp? What about an iOS bootcamp? DevMountain offers classes online and in person with housing at no additional cost. Learn how to build real-world applications and get a job in the industry through DevMountain's career-centric program. Whether it's web development, iOS, user experience, or quality assurance, DevMountain has a class for you. Let them know I sent you their way and they'll give you $250 off the tuition. Link in the description. Now, I already recorded this video once, and I'm redoing it because the first time, it was just really complicated. And the goal for this video here is to keep it simple. So if you want to know all the juicy details, you can find all that stuff online. You can find examples of where this might bite you in the butt. But most of the time, you're not going to have to worry too much about it. But it is good to understand the concepts, so let's talk about them. Basically, you can see the concepts of hoisting by doing a console log and putting some variable in here that you've never created. Do a refresh, and we get x is not defined. Now, if after this we go and create this variable and assign it a value, now when we do a refresh, we get undefined. So this line of code that comes after this one is affecting the output. So what is going on here? Well, you can basically think of it as a two-step process. First step, our code is scanned and any variable declarations, such as var x, happens first. Then the second time around, the second step, the, the code is executed line by line. So the second time around, this is hit and var x has already been declared, which is why we get undefined, which is the default value when we declare a variable. So logically, this is what's happening. We have var x, then we console log x, and then we assign a value to x. Now your code is not actually being rearranged like this, but this is the way you would think about it. When we do a refresh, we get the same exact value. Now when we're talking about functions, function declarations are hoisted, including their function body. So if I do something like this, function do stuff, and in here we'll just console log, uh, we'll just say, hey. Well, we can obviously go down here and call this function, do a refresh, and we get hey. But what we can actually do is we can take that line and we can put it at the top, and it will still work. So we do a refresh, and we still get hey. That's because this entire thing happens first in that first sweep, and then the second time around, the function call happens. So logically, you can think of it like this. The, the function is going to be moved to the top, and then we're going to execute the function. Again, our code's not actually being re rearranged, but that's how you can think about it. So I'll put that back to how it was. Now this is a function declaration. Function expressions are a little bit different. So if I assign this to a variable, we'll say var do stuff, um, assign it this function, and this is specifically for var. We'll talk about let and const in a minute, which is a little bit different. Now when we do a refresh, you can see we actually get an error. See, this is a function expression, which in function expressions, it works just like any other variable, only the function declaration is, is a quote, move to the top. <laughs> so logically, it's going to look like this. var do stuff, and then we'll assign a value to do stuff down here. When we do a refresh, you can see we get the same value, so you can think about it this way. So function expressions, only the variable is hoisted and not the entire body. So that is the primary difference between function declarations and function expressions. Function declarations, the entire thing is hoisted. For function expressions, only the variable is hoisted, which is the same exact way it works for any other variable. So function expressions have nothing special about them. So the main takeaway, when working with function expressions assigned to variables, we cannot use them before they are assigned to we can only call this function after we assign it a value. Now when we do a refresh, we get hey. And we don't actually need that line anymore. Well, we didn't need it in the first place, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> do a refresh, and there we go. Now when you're working with let or const, you're never going to be able to use the variable before it is initialized. So let's go through an example like that. If we say console log, pass in x here, and then we say let x and assign a value 10, do a refresh, you can see we get an error. 
cannot access x before initialization. So that is how it works with let and const. You can kind of think of it as procedural. It's not going to do anything ahead of time. Now, if you want to know all the juicy details about let and const, it's basically broken up into a three-step process of declaration, initialization, and assignment. There is technically a little bit of hoisting with let and const where the declaration happens, but it's not actually initialized with the value undefined. So no memory is given to this variable. And this is a little bit confusing, so I didn't really want to get into it because I don't believe the natural human being breaks up variable creation into three steps. Usually it's thought of as two steps, declaration and initialization. When we're talking about let and const and hoisting, it's split up into three, declaration, initialization, and assignment, where the declaration says, hey, there is a variable here. The initialization is where we give that some memory and initialize it to undefined. The assignment is when we actually give it a value such as 10. So if you want to be that granular, then that's fine. With let and const, only the declaration step happens when, when the hoisting happens. So the initialization where it's actually given the value undefined, that happens when the code is actually hit. So if you want to know more details, here is a good article, Hoisting in Modern JavaScript with let, const, and var. Here you can get all of the code samples explaining the difference, but functionality wise, you don't really have to worry about hoisting with let and const because the code is going to work as you would expect if you went through the lines one by one. So yeah, if you want more info, check this, check this article out. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. In the next video, we're gonna be talking about functions as first class citizens. Super important topic, and it's definitely one of the, the big pieces of JavaScript. So go check it out, and please be sure to subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.